Hey guys, I think that I got a really bright idea in the middle of the night last night. It was a long night, and <laughs> only a genius could come up with this. <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be an epic fail. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to take y'all along <laughs> for the journey. Anyway, don't laugh. Over the weekend, we started a new bioreactor. And one thing I did differently this time from last time, I've got a new camera stand here, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work. But when we were um, mixing all the components up to add to the bioreactor, I made, uh, the addition I made, uh, the first bioreactor I had to do, I had to use only one um, high nitrogen source. So this is my second one. So they allowed me to use more than just one. And I chose cow manure. In the process of trying to mix this cow manure into the bioreactor, it got like down and dirty. I ended up having to use my hands. And what I did was I added these cow pies. Look, they're fresh. They were out in the cold. And um, I uh, added warm water to them. And then uh, I ended up mix, mix, mixing with my hands. Super fun. Brought, brought back my childhood days of making mud pies with, out of chicken eggs for the chickens. So, this is what I want to try. And I'm running it past you guys. Although, I'm just going to go ahead and try it in a couple bins. Or whatever amount this makes. Okay, see how I... Um, this is super hot water because I wanted to warm this up. So, I just added like three cups. And then I just started mixing. Um, we were outside, so you might want to try this outside instead of in your basement oh boy but this is where my camera is and this is where it's warmest so i'm slowly adding this was my thought too because this is super hot water because i want to bring the ambient temperature of this up and if i add it slowly i feel like i'm not gonna hurt any of the microbes that maybe can't withstand those super hot temperatures but then again maybe it's okay to do that so you see how the consistency of this is really starting to change now I'm thinking of the lady, uh, Jane from Rockin' Worms and how she uses her cement mixer after she dehydrates her cow poop <laughs> and she runs that cement mixer. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of energy. Me, I like to burn calories and not, uh, kilojoules. But anyway, no, I may have even said that wrong. Look, my hair's getting in the poop too. Make sure you put your hair in a ponytail, a bun, or braid it and get it out of the way when you do this. But okay. So I'm not sure exactly what consistency I'm looking for. And I may go ahead and get a drill with the, um, I do have one. I just, I didn't think to get it out and try it. And that might really make a mess too if you get a drill and really start doing that. So it doesn't take much at all. This is still really cold. But see how that broke up really nice. Okay, so now my um, Euro bins are too dry. They're too dry. And I thought, oh goodness, I'll have to get them out and add water to them. And they seem maybe like they're not laying cocoons real well. Maybe it's because it's too dry. Maybe it's because I'm, I've got them foraging in this new compost that I made a month ago, but it just doesn't seem, I don't know. I feel like they might like it a little fresher and I don't know, maybe not so broke down. Maybe it was the substrates I used. I'm not sure. The microbe biology in it looked really good. Okay, so there's a stick in there. Okay, um, maybe I would attempt to make this thinner. I don't know yet. I have some ideas <laughs> about how to apply it. Now, I'm on the large scale, so I'm like first thought of my hand jerky making. It's a tube that you put the hamburger in and then you squeeze it and it comes out those tubes at the end or sausage making tube thing. 
nope that's gonna wear my hand out and i got way too many i need something super fast so trying to determine whether that's almost i think too thick um i think i want it a little thinner um but maybe not uh it it's definitely broke up really good so what i'm thinking of using this is as the ultra aphrodisiac uh food substrate for these worms one it's also going to add moisture to my bed they are going to think they are in heaven and um I also don't want it so liquidy that it pours out. So let's go ahead and try this consistency, you guys. I'm afraid, but that's why I wanted you guys with me while I do this. So I'm just going to take it by the handful. I thought super easy. And we're going to just throw it into this small, it's a one-gallon bucket. And I have just a leftover bag that I had some fleece in. And I'm using it to... Um, you're probably only going to get one shot out of each one of these bags because you are not going to want to touch the surfaces. You know, I want to keep this as clean as possible. And also, that's why I got the bucket of water next to me because I am definitely going to wash this glove off because, as you can see, it's covered. Okay, it gets heavy, too. So, I, you're not going to want something so big that it's going to be too heavy. Here's my thought. There's something in masonry, you know, when they do the cracks, they have to use the pipetting. So you guys probably know about in cake making. Okay, you see how clean that is? Just washed it right off. I don't think I should. Okay, I'm going to need the glove. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take you over to, don't you love my new camera stand? It's on wheels and it just turns right around. Okay, so now we're to the Euro <laughs> phase two. Are you guys excited? Because I am. Okay, so here's the euros that are a little bit dry. Oh, what I'll do is I'll remove this bedding and I will take it to this backup bin. I probably should have had that already done so this video would not have gotten too long, but shouldn't take too long. I should have had the lid off. So, okay, um, so that they don't, I should be wearing two gloves. But I just got this new stand. The great thing about the new stand, can you guys see? It's got drawers even. It's my old nail technician stand. Um, there's a drawer up here on top. So I put the, then there's a little cubby down in there. And I put the uh, gloves in there now instead of having the buckets. All right. Let's roll fast. Got two gloves. Okay. These guys can go. Okay. See how dry that seems like it is? I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell just from the uh, ooh, camera view. If I, I hear like on some other videos, people say, okay, some people are commenting that it looks dry. Let me pull you down. Can you see better now? Okay. See a little bit more of the bend. Okay. See how their stuff is kind of like sticking to them? So I feel like maybe this is the problem. Now, what I want to do is I want to make an aphrodisiac line here and on the other side. So, we'll make our tunnels. I believe that since I'm only going to be adding a small amount of this super high nitrogen, I don't think... Oh, gosh. I don't want to have to get into adding this every two days. But, <laughs> no way. Maybe if I add enough that they consume it fairly quickly it's enough to boost them into laying their cocoons in this bedding here's my other thought on bedding maybe uh when we do the breeder bends okay our substrates should be much larger and much chunkier so that these cocoons that they lay just fall right out of the substrate okay and that way these big chunky so like the orchid bark maybe if we soak that in cow manure for x amount of time and then uh, we can add some other types of substrates that that won't filter won't go through you, you'll you'll have three weeks worth of castings but it's not like you're gonna have to sift through all the bedding as well Okay, so hopefully big substrates, then all those um, cocoons will just 
fall off the substrate into our trap and then we'll remove the substrate. That's my goal. That's what I'm hoping for with these euros. So, here we go. I am removing. Let me show you what I'm doing. See how easy this is, right? Because it's got to be easy, otherwise we ain't doing it. <laughs> okay, so then I'm just twisting this. This is a used bag, remember. <laughs> Nothing new. I'm reusing from my environment. And you see that? I got a big pipette bag. All right, I may end up, uh, I should use a hair tie or something to hold it, but uh, I got the scissors. Okay, so here's the scissors, and I'm not for sure how big of a hole. I'm going to want to start with a small hole. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just set it here. And maybe that big. Okay. Here it comes. <laughs> Cow is taking a poop <laughs> in my worm bin. Okay. So I'm hoping that. Okay. The hole might be a little bit small. I am. I like to go fast. <laughs> I want this to happen quickly. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time. Okay, so the consistency of this is going to matter because if it's too uh, if it's too um, thin, then it's going to come flying out of here, and we're going to have a mess that we don't want. All right. So now I don't want to add so much that it starts to heat up my bin either. Okay, so I've factored that in. Oh crap! I've got a clog here. So so. You're gonna want it mixed uh, consistently enough so that um, your uh, little monitor, okay, maybe I'll just put enough in for like, let's say three bins <laughs> today. And then we'll keep monitoring it and see how it does. Okay, so I feel like this is a really good, this is almost like the sausage maker size um, for that jerky maker. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's a piece of, um, thought maybe it was, I thought that was a roundworm that came out of the cow, but no. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm hoping that just stimulates them into thinking, ah, oh, this is amazing. Um, and then I'm hoping they'll distribute that moisture around also that they'll crawl through it and they'll get moist when they need it. And then off into the drier substrate, maybe. That way I can keep my substrate straight dryer so that it's ready in three weeks to pull out these. I mean, you guys, y'all see, I mean, I hope you, these cocoons I measured, that one I'm going to measure. <laughs> this is funny. We do this in the honeybee world. We try to um, raise the biggest queens we can. <laughs> so a lot of us started weighing our honeybees showing off how big they were at birth <laughs> okay so let's i got the measure device right here i don't want the video super huge but i've got my numbers too so some of these cocoons that i was uh, measuring yesterday because we were i'm looking for a sifter for the euro cocoons and on those cocoons i have them at um some of these four millimeters Holy moly, that's like awesome, I think. I don't know. Okay. So, here's how we got to measure this guy. One, I'm going to pick him up so that you guys know I'm not fudging you. Right? Not fudging. This way, I might have squished him a little. Sorry, guy. Okay, that looks better. A 3.7. That is ooh, without the side. That's the smaller side. 3.7. That's my largest one. I will show you uh, my list here of the ones I'm measuring from this reset. Okay, now 3.7 and his width. And it's hard to measure this way because of those um, tips. But I got him a 5.1. I got him a 5.1. I've just got him set in there. He's holding under those tips. You can call them tits. I don't care. They're little knobs on either side. And he is just huge. He's just massive. I'm going to put him right there by the poop. Okay. So that's kind of where I'm headed with this. 5.1 milliliter. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll show you then also what I have found on that is, you guys are going to croak. Give me a second. I believe for these euros, this is the screen that I'm going to need. Look at this baby. I mean, it's huge, but look at here. If we measure this screen, oh my, 4.98. So that, it will fit through as long as it falls straight through with the small side heading down. Okay, with the tips up and down, it will fit. Now, here's my other thought. I'm going to call the seed co cleaner company, and they have not these circular ones, but they're round and oblong. I feel like that's going to be the best sifter for these cocoons, those oblong screens, because of those two tits on either side. Okay? What what that long oblong screen is going to do is allow those to fall through the thin way, the smallest way, this way. And then the oblong way will have the two tips, tips coming out. Okay. So I'm still searching for screens. We're playing around. I got those extra seed clean screens to try some different sizes. Whew, these euros, they are huge. So now that's my thought. What if we go with a huge bedding? something that does not break down in that amount of time but they think they're in a really good environment because i'm feeding it this green poop so they want probably the green stuff i don't know Woo! anyway this is kind of fun but be careful i guess if you squeeze it too hard if you end up with a clog so it's just like it's coming out of the cow's butt isn't that awesome <laughs> these worms aren't going to know the difference Oh, I don't want to add too much, right? Because it's going to start heating up. I do not believe that amount will heat up. I almost need a little tray then to set this in. I'm just going to set it up right here in the bucket. And I really feel that those euros are going to love that. Okay, so they're going to tunnel in and out. And I hope that's really going... And they're going to want to deposit their um, castings maybe right next to it. And uh, as they travel in and out, they won't even notice how dry the bedding is, maybe, because they'll be wet. I don't know. Here's another big old stinking cocoon. Oh, goodness. So I didn't turn this up too much. Okay, that's not, I don't want to do that. I will um, add, well, shoot, I hate to do four, but I don't think it could hurt them. Add in fresh cow poop. But that's what I'll do right there. I'll do two bins because I've got I got enough for another one. I don't think I have enough for. Oh shoot! I made a bunch more. Maybe we'll play around with some of our other. Um, so this is kind of sunk down because of the uh, shoot of the um, the bed. You know the wool underneath there's kind of going down. So I've got some more here I can add. No, I'm not going to. Uh, we'll leave it at this for right now. We'll let them crawl through there. How do you guys think that's going to work? <laughs> Any good? So now, be coming up with some ideas for larger size bedding. Okay, so if we go get... I'm thinking that orchid bark is something. But if you go to arborists and you get these larger chunk stuff and just really coat them... With the manure, will they believe that it's a really good substrate? And if we put wool in there or something on the bottom, I don't know. Of course, wool's not. Yeah, wool, that wool will probably allow, I don't think it's going to, if you set that wool out, spread it out. And in fact, the wool should almost be gone by the time three weeks is here. We'll see. Especially if I'm not turning the bin. It probably will take longer. This is all learning. This is all new. Stay tuned to everybody. I'll try to include you all in on it. And I want all you guys' thoughts and opinions. Um, I'm willing to do some experimenting here. And we'll see how we can do to get these. Whew. 
I have a feeling I'm going to have a hard time getting these um, cocoons separated from the substrate fast. Have you all seen that video of that cocoon separator that uses a computer to record the <laughs> castings as they're falling down and then it uses a puff of air to shoot the cocoon into a different uh, area where it falls separate from the castings? I thought, holy moly, this this vermicompost thing must be a real deal if you're going to spend that kind of money to get those castings back. Anyway, those are my thoughts. That's what I'm going to play around with. Going to make them a fake, <laughs> a fake substrate out of, I don't know, some sort of little ball soaked in um, cow dung. And then once they get in there, they can just... You know, just think about it. If you took golf balls and you coated them all with this cow dung and then... Or what about lava rocks? You know, if you coated the lava rocks and then they went in there and spent three weeks just kind of cleaning all that out. And then you continue to add the cow dung. And they think, this is great substrate for these little cocoons there in that cow dung liquid. And then um, sift... I wouldn't think you would have that much frass or castings from just feeding them the cow dung for three weeks could be wrong but at least then all those rocks are hopefully going to release the um cocoons out of there when it's bouncing on the sifter and you're not going to have nearly those castings so maybe then you can take those and the castings and put them both into the nursery with then a substrate. So your second level where you put the cocoons and a very few castings, that's where your breeder bins are going to be at, okay? You're not going to want to get castings from your breeder bin. That's not going to be the, the goal. For the breeder bins, you're going to want cocoons. So you're going to be cycling these things every three weeks so I'll check and see how many castings I get I'll get a bag of lava rocks soak it in this poop and put it in there and see if I can get them to live in these lava rocks soaked with poop and then um I'll just extract the cocoons I'll run the rocks through the sifter and see how many cocoons and some castings come out. Those will go in the nurseries. The nurseries and growers, that's where we're going to focus on gaining our um, castings from. Big, huge tanks, loaded full of worms, possibly. Okay, I need a lot of extra scientific brain power working on this. Tell me what you think about the lava rocks. I guess nobody's going to know until we give it a shot. So I will pick up a bag. I actually have lava rocks in the backyard. Maybe I'll scoop some up, put it in one of these bins, soak it in the rest of that cow poop and see how these worms like it. I'll put some, um, I'll put the, uh, some of the fleece in there too and uh, just give it a go. All right, thanks for watching this video. I'm pretty happy with the results here, the turnout so far, uh, with how nice and quick <laughs> playing in that poop ended up being. Uh, didn't use any energy to do that besides the um, hot water heater because the poop was cold, so we needed to warm that up. Uh, but I also have an outdoor wood-fired water heater I could use. Um, but still, there is some carbon expenditure there and with the chainsaw and things like that. Even though, even if we just pick up Twix out of the yard, we're going to be burning some CO2. Uh, okay, video is getting way too long, so I'm going to have to cut it. But I wanted to bring you guys along with the first try ever for the ultra aphrodisiac worm stimulant. That's it for now. I'm going to make another video, and I'm going to start the lava rock experiment. Let me know you guys are here, and give me some comments. Make yourself a permanent resident here at the Carbon Flip. Turn the notifications off because you're going to get tired of seeing me, and check back in about eight months and see how much progress we have made. Spread the love far and wide because I'm going to need some major 
massively focused minds in order to help me achieve this project.